Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Hotdog and we are going to be playing some Imperator Rome with the new 1.2 Cicero patch. Welcome back. Yeah, I know I haven't been uploading for a while. I took a new job in May and it's been very, very um, busy actually. I've been away for work a lot and that makes it kind of difficult to record additional things for YouTube. But I think I have found a way to work around and I'm just going to record whenever I have the time. So. 1.2, I actually really enjoyed my time, even with the Imperator Rome release version. It did have its rough edges. Um, 1.2 is definitely a lot better than the release version, uh, like especially what they did to the pop system, but we're going to get to that. What I want to play is probably... Eh, it's probably not so suitable to a Let's Play. I want to play Athens, so uh, some of you might know that I actually am a philosophy major. And uh, I specialized in ancient Greek philosophy, so I have a really uh, soft spot for Athens. And why not try to bring them back to power? Um, so Athens at this time and this uh, time period is very, very much diminished. So you might know that they had like big wars with Sparta over the hegemony in all of Greece. Um, until Sparta was actually thrown down. Like Sparta won the Peloponnesian War against Athens, um, took away their took away their city walls and everything. And for a time, it looked like Sparta had the upper hand. But then Athens came back uh, together with Thebes and a couple of other cities, and they took uh, Sparta down. They took away um, those uh, farming areas, and Sparta really um, did never recover. But it didn't really do Athens much good because. Very soon after that, you had like Macedon come up, um, Alexander of Macedon and Philip of Macedon, and they basically took the um, yeah the Greek peninsula um, for themselves. They were the the hegemon hegemons, and these guys really never recovered as a political power. Um, and at this time, we have Phrygia holding its uh, hand over Athens, protecting them against Macedon. Um, just making sure that Macedon doesn't eat all of these states and that they can exist independently. Problem is, Phrygia didn't really live that long. Um, historically, they kind of fell down and splintered. The problem is, yeah, on the one hand, we're protected against Macedon, but we're also a feudatory, so we're a vassal to Phrygia. And if we really want to get back to strength and greatness and control all of Greece, what we have to do is we have to backstab our overlord, which is... Not easy, I did a test game, and yeah, um, the states seem to be much more stable in this version than they used to be. So Frigia, instead of splintering into lots and lots of small parts like they did in the release version, now they're pretty stable. I don't really like it when I'm playing Athens, because there's really, it's really difficult to get away from Frigia then, and as soon as you're free from Frigia, most of the time you will have to deal with Macedon. So this might not be a... Um, playthrough where I can actually reach my target, um, so to speak. But we're just gonna do it anyways, I think. Um, so this should be fine. We're gonna play on normal because the game actually has gotten harder with the new update. And this is a pretty difficult enough starting position, but I'm gonna play Iron Man. So just to make this a little bit more interesting. We start as Athens. The um, So I'm gonna call this Athens LP. Let's go. And we start in the time after Alexander the Great. In Babylon 18 years ago, the Argid king Alexander died suddenly at the age of 32. In the five years preceding his death, his continuing military successes had reshaped the world known to the Greeks. His empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The shock of Alexander's early death and his lack of a chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by these potentates styled themselves as Diadochoi. For many years, they and their successors have been locked into a bitter struggle over the future of the Empire, drawing all nations within their sphere of influence, and so forth. The die is cast. We're back with Athens. Uh, so, we have one upside. This is the site of Plato's Academy, um, which gives us a way higher civilization level than basically everyone around us. We're like, we're way civilized, you know? Way civilized. We talk all day about philosophy. Not that... Um, Athenians back then really had much esteem for philosophy. They were kind of more looking on Socrates and the other philosophers as rabble rousers and kind of a thorn in the side of the mighty. So um, the high esteem that they get nowadays not really happening back in the day from uh, a lot of people. But it's still, this is the um, 
and birthplace, at least of Western philosophy. So what we start with is we have a province over here that produces precious metals. Uh, we have a decent um, population here with these 24. Now, um, managing pops has changed quite a bit in the 1.2 version, so they will automatically assimilate to um, your culture and your religion. Um, you can no longer do that manually. You can also no longer manually promote um, pops and uh, that changes how you have to interact with these so what you want to do is build buildings to manipulate the ratio of a certain population type so if you want more citizens you have to build buildings that increase the ideal ratio of citizens um, in your city um, cities um, are no longer everywhere most provinces on the world are now just territories um, or settlements, which means they can only have one building. This one has a mine. We have to change all of these into cities, by the way. So uh, our capital over here is a city. Um, this is a settlement. We also control um, Lemnos and Imbros over here. Um, this is a city, Lemnos. Uh, Imbros isn't. Uh, it has fish. Um, but we might still want to change that into a city. The thing is, in my test game, I did that, and then the fish actually changed into glass. I'm not sure why that happened, but it uh, created a bit of a problem in terms of food supply. Um, what you can do with the new system is you can build a vast amount of buildings. Um, so Academy, for example, will change the promotion speed of your pop, so people will move faster into a higher level of... Um, the, in, into another social stratum. Um, so this is uh, for citizens, gives you more citizens as an ideal fraction. This is for freemen, there's one for slaves. Um, you can increase your taxes, your commerce value. Um, there are certain military geared buildings. This will help you assimilate people faster. The aqueduct, once you reach 30 civilization in a, in a um, given province, you can actually build this to get more population capacity. Now, um, the plus four is kind of deceiving because that is before all modifiers. If you look at this, we have a base of 10, we get some from our civ value, some from our city, and then there's 50% from farmland, 40% from warm climate, 50% from capital territory, and 25% from coastal port. So um, that four is actually going to be much, much higher every time we build it. And what we want to do here to kind of gain power while we cannot lead wars to gain power is I want to go down the military tree um, to get to this uh, slave raid, which will allow us to send our fleets all across the Mediterranean and just get people as slaves and transport them home to our home city. So we're going to try to get this up to a lot of population in my test game. I managed to get up to like uh, 200 pops in 570 or something. Um, and that should, in, in the end, give us enough power to save some money and use mercenaries and maybe a inopportune moment in three years life to break free and then to defend ourselves against Macedon. It's gonna be it's gonna be a difficult ride, but we can we can see what we can do. In terms of city um, development. What you can do is you can um, improve them by using your influence. So now all the mana points, um, political influence, uh, military influence, all that kind of stuff has all been merged into political influence now. And this you get from all the people in your court. If they're very loyal, they give you a lot of points. If they're not, um, then you don't get a lot of this. Um, and every time you reach a certain threshold, you can use that to make some permanent investments into a specific province. So, And this would apply to all of these. So it's actually really beneficial now to um, conquer in your capital territory um, because they will all profit from this. Um, so this will increase the output. This will give all the provinces an additional building slot. That's going to be pretty important for us. This will allow us to go for another import route um, so we can get more goods here and this will make people just happy so state religion happiness we're going to be a little bit careful with how we use the influence because you do use that for a lot of things now um and you also use it for founding cities so over here once we have enough money we can upgrade this to a city which will increase its uh, population value and will allow us to build normal buildings these territories you can only build one there are some specialized ones like this mine that increases the output in terms of goods over here. Not that we really need that, but um, we're going to need it once we go out and go raiding for slaves. There's a new mechanic in terms of food. Um, that's going to be our Achilles heel. 
because we have a bit of a problem in terms of producing food. We will have to import that from... Yeah, just let's say Egypt. I don't think we're gonna have many problems with Egypt. Uh, we're close enough that we can import things from them. All's good. Um, okay, so influence. The other thing that we need is military experience. So you get that from your average cohort experience. You always get a bit of a base value. And then if you're in wars, and if you have war exhaustion, this goes up much quicker. What you can still do though, is you can just start training your troops. Um, with this, you're gonna give them a commander. And then they'll start um, training and improving their experience and that'll increase our points generation, which we need very much because we want to unlock that rating stance. Um, omens and uh, stability already changed with 1.1, but yeah, so this is more gradual. You can't just slaughter the pig to immediately become more stable. You have to spend the points to um, make this go up further. It will naturally go towards 50. Um, higher than 50 has... Uh, chunk bonuses lower than 50 has a bunch of debuffs uh, omens got reworked so now uh, most places have something on their own and we also have a heritage for at least the more important countries so for ours it is monthly tyranny reduction and we take less shift ship damage but we will have higher law costs so changing our laws is more expensive all right then i guess um Okay, so we want to take some ideas here. Luckily, we actually have three idea slots because we're a civilized country. That's nice. We get some national freeman happiness from our form of government. That's all right. Um, so we want to talk military idea. I think it makes most sense for us actually to take the reduced shipbuilding costs. Um, here, civic ideas. We have to... Um, I kind of feel like we need to go standardized construction and like that's going to save us a lot of money on the other hand though this is probably going to make us a lot of money i ex uh, intend to invest a lot into um, increasing the amount of import routes that we can have so this is probably a good idea let's go national commerce income and then here religious ideas uh yeah this is still the best one over here state religion so we'll go with that having more civilization level yeah, it's kind of nice all right Anything else that we need? Our two policies are wealth, so which this increases our local tax and our um, province commerce. That's actually pretty nice for both of them, so that's all right. Um, we get that. Why are we? Ah, okay. No, I screwed this up. No, okay. So we gotta go monthly corruption. Throw away some political influence. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. No, we're all human. We all make. We'll make mistakes from time to time. Inventions can now be bought with money. And I think we could pretty much just buy all inventions. So the other the other way that we can become powerful without our overlord really being able to control us is by going massively towards tech and trying to stack up the tech as much as we can um, and get a real edge on the country surrounding us. So we have to go pretty heavily on the citizens, but we still have to be able to... Um, get things done in terms of uh, importing and making enough money to keep ourselves afloat since we only have four provinces in terms of import we definitely want to get gemstones from from egypt that's like 20 percent additional tax that's really sweet and what else do we want iron horses wood do we have wood i think it would be really nice to have wood so that we can build some proper ships None of, our, none of our places have wood. Uh, precious metals, iron. We have salt over here and we have fish. Salt is actually pretty nice now because it boosts your population capacity and every surplus gives you more food capacity. So yeah, salt's pretty nice. Um, wood, yeah. We'll probably have to get the wood in terms of um, just being able to build good ships. Is there anything that is real important? I mean, papyrus. We can probably get wood at some other point. Who would sell us wood? Okay, yeah, that's quite a few people. Wood is pretty plentiful. I don't think we have to go for this right now, so we can just go with papyrus for now. I think that's good. Um, cloth is nice. Papyrus. We could go marble too, but... Yeah, no, we'll go papyrus. Pretty difficult to get papyrus later on um okay so that's good and then what i want to do is i actually want to get rid of the archers uh, we don't have a lot of manpower so we have to be manpower efficient kick these guys out um what else do i want 
uh, with three trade routes because we have the trading permits. We have to wait a little while until we can push more um, into these investments. What I can still do is see if I can't get... Yeah, so this guy, he's like uh, rather disloyal and that reduces the amount of political influence that we can get. He's the head of a family. Um, I think he's also disloyal. We could try to bribe him or we could try to bring him to trial. Uh, let's try actually. Uh, now we can bring him out of the office. He's got a six value. We'll use someone that's a little bit more loyal because we really want to get that influence. He's at 70. And he's got eight points. Yeah, okay, there's no better candidate for this. I think what is really important now in this new version is actually the wages to keep the people happy that you have an office to uh, exert more political influence. What we can dispense uh, with right now is our fleet maintenance because that's not that important. Um, taxation we're gonna we're gonna keep here at this level. Army maintenance we can bring down. I think yeah. Okay. And then we're gonna put someone in charge. Ideally our leader. He's the part of the civil faction, which is all right I think. Um, yeah, put him in charge. Ah, yeah, okay, we can't train when we have to increase pay. We really need to train. So we train these guys. Um, I talked with Rose, and Rose said that um, the more people you train with, the more experience you get. Not 100% sure, but we'll see how it goes. We're probably going to get pulled into the first war by free, yeah, like, immediately. Um, let's go ahead and actually start building some stuff. So we have two academies here for the pop promotion speed, but it's not clear what our people should be. So let's go ahead and actually start building a library. And then maybe we'll get some inventions here. So let's go national tax and import value because it's gonna give us more money. Anything else? Oh yeah, we need an omen. Should we go more taxes? Yeah, probably. Or more research points. How are we doing in research? Research is probably going to be more of a gradual pro process. I mean, we already have 150%. We don't have a lot of population. So that's not too bad, I'd say. Uh, let's get the omen power. Make our omens a little bit more powerful. Yeah, I think we're just going to need money in the beginning. Mainly just money. So let's go with that. National tax. Because I want to turn all these um, provinces into cities, actually. And we can go right away up to the highest speed. Um, just because there's not that much to do. Like, we're, we're tiny. Frigia is going to pull us into our first war, like, probably almost immediately. Because that's how they roll. Yeah, starting experience is actually kind of nice. It's going to do good things for us. And uh, that's also... Ooh. So our guy is now vengeful once he's been wronged. Our guy never forgets. He's said to hunt down his foes with a singular purpose until they rue the day they ever crossed ways. Uh huh. So he's, he's just a, an all around nice guy. He's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you wake up with a severed uh, horse head in your bed if he doesn't like you. We have some autonomy. Industrious folk have excelled themselves, contributing their own personal funds to develop the infrastructure of their fine city. I hope this attitude can be mirrored by some of our lo less loyal subjects. What? What? That's. <laughs> So this must be a city that already has uh, the max in terms of buildings and you get nothing out of it. We could lose some popularity for some money actually. We don't really need the manpower. I don't expect us to do a lot in terms of manpower right now. I mean, if we get called into wars by free gear, we're not gonna fight. That's that's not a thing. That's not how we roll because we're like, we're just an old democracy. We want to do our things. We want to trade. Uh, we just want to feel good about ourselves here and not really take part too much in all those global shenanigans. What we got to make sure though is that the populists don't rise to power. Um, yeah. I'd love for these guys to not come into office because it reduces our political influence that we get. Got to be a little bit careful about that. The main thing... Okay, average cohort experience is already giving us 0.21. I think we can live with the fact that we are just going to have a very small army at this point. We should probably like boost our fortress level here so that it takes really long for us to besiege down. 
What is this? Council of Lemnos have sent an envoy proclaiming that harvests, trade and taxation have all produced a huge surplus this year. In a splendid show of national spirit, they've decided to offer the additional income to the state, perhaps which could let them spend the money for their own use, however. So it's the city over here, which isn't very much developed right now. Could get 20 bucks. We could give them a marketplace. Uh, we could hold some local gains to boost the popularity of their governor. I don't see what that would give us. Um, ask the residents what they want. Yeah. Mm, I mean, it's a free building. It's a lot more than those, those 20 bucks. So all of these are good. Yeah, they can just have something. What do they take? They take a uh, temple. Okay, sure. Why not? Have your temple. You like to pray in a in a specific house. They probably made it nice with gold and everything. Um, ancient Greek temples are actually real nice. Uh, like we have a wrong picture about uh, ancient Greece and like the ancients in general. They really didn't have all those white statues. Those were actually all painted. So the picture that we have from classical Greek um, is not that accurate actually i would like a lot more gaudy than you think so none of that none of that humble just all white marble statues no those were painted uh while the occasional rakish and loose tendencies of koroibos choreobit are well known throughout the upper circles of athena no one was quite prepared for the appalling slew of allegations leveled at him of late there are growing rumors of terrible indecencies perpetrated on slaves at debauched gatherings honoring dionysus where Koroibos and his loot entourage exhibit and debase the latest acquisitions from the Emporia of Oropos. He denies everything in the most stringent terms, claiming the tales to be lies engineered by his political opponents. It's fake news. Gossip is backed by several witnesses who claim to have been besmirched by him personally. Slaves and virtuous citizens across Hellas are demanding government, government sanctioned justice to deter these excesses. So this guy is the leader of the populists? Oh my. Would be a shame if something happened to him, eh? Okay, we'll conduct a full and fair investigation into this matter. Let's go. Bring that guy to justice. That's what needs to happen. Okay, we already have our um, political influence that we need. Now, we don't have quite enough to make this into a city, but what we do have is enough to procure an additional import route. So that's what we'll do. Let's go. Um, we lost someone here. Yeah, that loyalty, I don't like it. I don't like it. Part of the military faction. I'm willing to forgo this guy for this one. Because I want my political influence to be as high as possible. This, not important to us, but the influence is. So, let's keep it like that. Trial developments. Although there's still much work to be done, gathering testimony and exploring the specific crimes, both religious and temporal, like Koroibos may have committed, preliminary findings point heavily to his guilt. While the investigation is not complete, some have suggested that Koroibos may be prematurely detained in order to ensure he does not try to escape justice. Although this will undoubtedly distress the family even further. So we can offer them to. Uh, so that he can bribe us um, because we have a questionable character. We can imprison him as a precaution. Okay. Every member of the family loses 20 loyalty. They lose a lot of prestige. They lose popularity and loyalty. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. So, this is going to piss him off whatever we do. Unless I do this. I don't even want to go corruption because that will reduce the political influence that I can get. No, we'll just justice will be done. This, we're, we're a democracy, so we're going to go after this in the proper fashion. Scandal draws to a close. After several weeks of gathering testimony, it has become clear that even the wildest rumors circulating uh, have hardly scratched the surface of the wickedness perpetrated by Koroibos, who has committed unspeakable horrors in the name of Hades. Countless witnesses have come forward from household slaves to catamites, and the mountain of evidence cannot be dismissed as mere calumny. Having consulted with the most senior religious and judicial experts, there can be no doubt that he is heinously guilty in the eyes of the law and Zeus both. Yesterday, the high priest joined near all else in baying for his blood. We must now decide what to do with him. A lenient punishment will not be viewed favorably by the slaves, but if we are too harsh, we risk alienating the entire Koreobit family. Uh, so we can push for him to have a fine. 
Um, we can also kill him, I think. No, he was going to be disallowed from office. So he basically loses his citizenship. That is pretty rough. Come on. Yeah, no. Well, a ruined reputation and a fine will deter as a variety of Fletcher's excess. That's actually amazing for us. Uh, not only can we take all the inventions, because they're all good. And we'll never get these as cheap. But we should also be able to start our first settlement as soon as we have the points for this. I need to build an additional building here and since I feel that uh, commerce is gonna be a pretty major source of income for us um, we're gonna lay one down here in terms of uh, commerce buildings that's gonna help us Olympics concluded uh, we get some popularity but nothing else um, yeah it's good political influence coming in each month um, cost us 50 to make this into a city we do have the money now which is nice so how is this coming along? So we're getting 66. How experienced are you guys? Is there any way to see how high we can get this up? Doesn't really seem to be a limit. Okay, that's fine then. I just want to, like, we need 400 of these points. The question is, does that still go down with um, with military advances, is what I want to know. A struggle between the religious echelons of our society and the peasants has recently come into light. As the populace at large feel like the religious ceremonies are inaccessible and distant. On the other hand, our auger and his attendants demand the distance needed to do their jobs properly and argument the peasants have no rights to the inner workings of our religious ceremony. So, yeah, the Omen power is currently giving us tax income, so that's kind of nice. Omen duration is good, although that's no longer a fact. I don't think I'm paying anything for these omens. Right? At least I haven't seen any cost to this. Hmm... We could gain 10 stability and reduce unrest for reduced omen power. We could just gain stability. Mm. The increased stability gives us some additional research, pop growth, commerce income, increases the thresholds for civil wars and rebellions. I mean, stability is not too bad right now. Yeah, we'll just take the free 5 stability and now you can see that it's going down. That's all right, I guess. Blessing of Hades. When people are like, you're gonna go to hell if you don't pay your taxes. We beseech the, oh, there's a real text to this. We beseech the God of the underworld to open his coffers for our cause and bless our people with his wealth. With all these minerals and newfound wealth, our society is sure to prosper for a long time to come. The great lord of the underworld is the oldest of the three, but he lost both the skies and seas to his younger two brothers, left behind with only the souls of the dead in the realm named in his honor. As well as being the caretaker of the dead, he's known for his wealth and access to the minerals of the earth. There are many stories of the heroes who traveled down to his realm to rescue someone, several of those leading to tragedies akin to Orpheus. Most Hellenics do not fear the god as he's not vengeful, nor actively seeks the death of mortals. After all, why bother when all living things will end up in his hands anyway? Yeah, he's, he's got time to wait. We have a petitioner here, a mature individual by the name of Hegemachus Hegemachid approaches our Archon in private this morning. In a hushed voice, he spoke of a vision of the near future in which he was found by his loved ones, having been hanged by brigands. With shaking hands, he offered all his worldly goods to the state in return for our protection. Funny thing is, if you have an insane ruler or a cruel one, you can actually make their biggest fears come true. <laughs> which is pretty evil if you think about it. <laughs> I don't think we need the money, really. We're actually making decent money right now, so... We're gonna take more stability, get that research point boost. Stability increased. I mean, it's gonna trend down significantly each month, but what can you do? At least we'll get this for a while. And the pop growth isn't too bad until we can actually steal pops from other people. We have to make sure that we get them growing naturally, but it takes a while, like 485. We're gonna have another Freeman. Um, yeah, 485 over here too. Um, this one 475. I think these guys have more food. Yeah, 475. 
Hmm. And the civic faction guy has been voted into office. We get more tax. Sweet. This is really good. This is really good. I like it. Now, what do we what do we take now? There's no more pop growth boost, which is a bit of a shame. I could take the research points. Um, but we're still going to need plenty of money to build up all our holdings. So I think we go with just national tax. Mm, yeah, sure. Okay, so national tax. We have an additional import route. Uh, maybe we take the wood now so that we can build things. Anything really good here. Precious metals we're producing ourselves. It would be weird if we imported that. Honey, maybe. Honey, local freeman output. Dates. Makes Freeman happy. Fish, vegetables, livestock. No more grain. First starting experience. Hmm. Could take hemp. Nah, let's take the wood. Let's take... Ah, damn it. I was hoping to get it from someone else other than... Frigia, but that's just how it goes. Okay, then. That's alright. That's alright. We'll live with this. Uh, we need a researcher for civic research. Mm, yeah, you're very loyal and very capable. I like that. That's a really great combination. Loyal and capable, guys. I think I'm going to make this like a double episode. And then we're going to proceed normally. We have legal chicanery. In an outrageous display of brazen ineptitude, Euxinippos Euxinippid challenged the ownership of a holding belonging to Democaris Demosthenid this afternoon. With only a set of blatant, blatantly forged documents to back up his claims, the proceedings did not last long. Okay. We could gain more stability. It kind of seems like the action that we should take most of the time. Just make our country as stable as possible. Just like a haven for people. Okay, so we're going to move this and make a city out of it. And so this costs a lot of money. It takes uh, quite a while to actually make this a thing. Uh, until 58, so two years. But, yeah, uh, after that we're going to be able to fit a lot more people into this. And we can fine-tune what the area is actually doing. Um, in terms of building more uh, specialized buildings in there. Renovations. Uh, Hemarchos Agamarket, in his civic capacity informs us that an opportunity has arisen. One of our most valued temples is in dire need of renovation. With enough investment, the building could become a shining beacon of our benevolence and architectural prowess. Sure, I guess. I mean, 30 bucks. Not sure why we're paying this with state funds, but okay then. Pericles built a lot of uh, stuff in Athens with the funds that um, their vanquished foes had to pay. So I guess this is a good, um, good example to follow. Uh, pirates, I like those guys. Um, there are no real laws that can benefit us right now, right? Or are there? Maritime laws? I kind of would like this one, Institute Wealth Levy, get 25% more import value, that seems pretty sweet. Hmm. I mean, ultimately, we should probably go transaction taxation to boost the value of our imports. Mm, I have a petition. A wealthy residents of Lemnos have sent a formal petition on behalf of the entire province, complaining about the harsh ways of their governor. It seems that his taxation policy is causing quite a furor amongst landowners who are having to work their slaves to the bone in order to meet tax quarters. It's certainly unusual for our subjects to complain in such a manner. Perhaps we ought to consider their arguments carefully. Mm, so we can say, nah, he's doing a fine job. Uh, we can send someone to make sure that he follows the rules. We can remove him. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna do this. So we'll become a little bit more popular. We're really popular right now. Um, it's gonna be a bit mad, but I don't think anything bad will come from this. Who ever heard of a mad governor doing anything bad to the country they come from? No one. Not I, for sure. Yay! Pop conversion speed, primary culture happiness, grain rations. 
Uh, oh, all of these have advanced. Okay. I think we have enough money to unlock those. Whoa, we're really lucky. Heavy infantry discipline plus 10%. Hell yeah. Give me that. All these are great. Siege ability 5% is actually not amazing because we have no basis to which this will be applied, so that doesn't help. But I'm actually kind of liking that you can just uh, unlock these inventions now with money because that's kind of what these seem to take, right? I mean, you've got to construct different siege engines and oil presses and whatnot just by using money. That's the way it works. Rivals at court. Lately, our Archon has come into conflict with Pericles. Pericles at every turn and decision, their opinions persistently clashing. If one of them says south, the other will promptly say north. If one wants to trade with a neighbor, the other will argue for war. This constant bickering is ruining whatever authority our guy used to have, and the atmosphere in Ath Athens is at breaking point. He's... Oh, he's a general. And the head of the Pericles family, which means this guy used to be our leader. And he already has one loyal regiment. Mm. Kind of thinking about just putting this guy in charge. Side of the mercantile faction. Yeah, I think it might be best if this guy had the army. So we can give him his will and lose some popularity. Or we can have him as a rival. We're gonna let him do things. I don't, I don't even want to add rivals if I don't have to. Um, who's gonna come to office next? And we could boost our... Ah, the cost for this is reduced, I think. Coming of the city of Oropos. Our extension of new privileges and investments into the local infrastructure has seen Oropos grow from relative humility into a true Athenian city. While it still has some way to go before it can rival the great cities of our age, the past two years have ushered in a new era of growth and urbanization in the territory. Awesome. Okay, so this place. We gotta think about what we want to do with it. Uh, we have a lot of slaves in there, but it doesn't really have to be that way. It is a bit sad that it's a marsh, because um, it will stop us from really making this um, super heavily populated, but we can still try to, to do things here. So, And I want mostly citizens in there, actually. So I'm going to build an academy, and I'm going to build a library. And that's about as much money as I have. Shadow of Doubt. Worrying rumors are spreading amongst our people that our nation has fallen from grace. Disturbingly, what started as idle chatter has begun to grow and the very stability of Athens is at stake. Were we to hold a national feast day, it might sway popular opinion in our favor once more. Sure. Yeah, okay then. I guess. Ooh, another capital import route. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. Uh, let's build costs. Sure, I unlock that right after I go for all these building projects here. Screw you, sir. I'm building this. I'm not sure if that changed anything, but I imagine it might. Okay, what do we import next? Livestock, fish, dates, honey, furs, hemp. Uh, I mean, having some additional slave output is probably nice. It's going to make us a lot of money, so let's go for the hemp. I'm super happy that we got those gemstones. It's a very, very valuable resource. I'm glad that um, Egypt is actually trading that to us. Let's just hope Frigga doesn't end up at war with them. A curious Egyptian man appeared upon our borders today, claiming asylum from his captors in Egypt. He additionally promises us rich land in his home country should we seek to extract vengeance on his behalf. What? We can game a claim on... What? A lot of Egypt? What are we going to do with that? No, go away. Athens is not the place for you. And we have the Olympic Games. Who do we want to send? 53-year-old or a 34-year-old? Two ideal candidates. A well-muscled brute of a man and a stout fellow. Hmm. Okay, we sent the 53-year-old. I'm not sure if that's really going to work out, but we'll see. We'll see. What do I know, you know? What do I know? I got no idea. We'll find out. So the academy has been built here. Ah, uh, we didn't win. Who would have thought it? Our 53-year-old didn't compete well against all those younglings. Hmm. Color me surprised. So what do we do here? Do we build an aqueduct? We don't really need additional population capacity. This went up quite a bit. Err... Uh, 
I don't know, actually. Yeah, we could probably go for an additional library. Like, I want to make this our research center. We could probably also go and build a marketplace. Yeah. Okay. No more building slots here. We could probably consider going for this. This has actually come down in price now. It only costs 72 influence. Lost our oratory researcher. Oh man, he's so disloyal. Hell no. You're not getting any. You're not even getting close to office. No disloyal people in my, in my thing. Even if it's at the cost of research. It's a proud tradition. Oh look, we have pirates here. They're actually living in our in our country. Okay, I guess. maybe change one of these laws yes look at this sweet so this is gonna reduce the force through Senate cost so this is gonna be the make the merchants happy but I want this Institute wealth levy it's a lot of influence but this is gonna make us a lot of money over time yeah sure you can march through Frigga is actually being surprisingly pe Oh, look at this. They lost... They lost some of the land. And now someone else is fighting these. I really hope they manage to take him over. What you doing? At war with Byzantium, war is fought to take Europa. Score is currently minus three for Thrace versus Byzantium. Ooh, Pergamon is allied with Thrace. Oh man, this is actually shaping up to be a really good playthrough for us. If we can... Like, if Pergamon can grow a little bit... Uh, they already allied with Thrace. Maybe we can actually shake off the yoke of Frigia. The only big problem that we have now... Oh no, oh no. Macedon already ate Epirus over here. Damn it. God damn it. <laughs> one good thing happens, one bad thing happens. I guess. Um, whether down to recent events, personal character, or political machinations, a rather amusing bill has been brought before the assembly, listing in excruciating detail the curious personal habits of our Archon. The bill is naturally laughed out of the assembly, but the perpetrator refuses to come forward. How should we act? Well, at least everybody's laughing. <laughs> They're laughing with you, not at you. Just remember that. <laughs> um, he's a party leader. Yeah, sure, we can make him... Ooh, look at this. Governor policy. More province commerce. Actually, that might be not a bad policy to choose here, too. Like, that's gonna reduce the governor wage. Yeah, let's encourage trade. Our guy isn't as competent, but oh well. This looks still good. And uh, we can go for another omen. So, how are we doing in terms of research? 156. Mmm... Do we need more money? Yeah, I still want to make this into a city. Mm. Okay, yeah, we'll go with this. Uh, we can probably build something over here. They already have a temple. We could build a theater, but I don't think there's anyone... Yeah, they're all Athenians already, so that's not a thing. Tax office... That's a pretty big city with a lot of population capacity. I'm not sure. Is there something that increases migration attraction? No, not really. Um, so let's just go ahead and build a granary on here. Mm, we should probably build something that makes people more loyal here. But let's just build an academy for now. A feast for democracies. The residents of Lemnos are holding a celebration in honor of their much-loved governor, uh, who I just put into office. I might, uh, I might add, yeah, I just, I, I put him there. So, give me the benefit. Uh, renowned for his beneficence, tolerance, and common sense. It's nice to see our proof kind of valid in such a way. So, I can just make them happy, or I can get money. He does not deserve such a jubilation. No, 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 no. This is fine. This is fine. He's kindly. So, should I maybe try to get this guy into office once more? Okay, civic faction. 
Uh, what you don't want in two office is the populists, but various decisions can actually empower the populists, which is a problem. Could empower the religious faction, which boosts the populist faction, so we really don't want that. Hmm. Build cost reduction is pretty nice. We should probably save and do all the buildings in one fell swoop. It's already 462. Um, still haven't even unlocked the, f like the first thing. Did the, did the cost go down? Hmm. It doesn't look like the cost will actually go down. It's probably not going to go down below 100. Maybe that's it. it. Used to be that the higher military level, the lower that is. Ooh! Patriotic citizens in Athena are ecstatic at our benevolent rule. In honor of our majesty, they've kindly raised a rather pitiful sum of gold, hoping to procure some political favor. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks for the money. I appreciate it. There's nothing I can build here right now, but I still appreciate it. Hauled in front of the Senate, Timaios Toromenate is a sorry sight. Caught with a mace in his hand, he's said to have been ready to strike down Euxinippus Euxinippit in a brutal act of violence. Luckily, passers-by were quick enough to act and prevent this terrible deed. And we now have the unenviable task of passing judgment on the wicked Timaios. So, you tried to mace someone to death? I'm not sure that's all that good. Yeah, we gotta imprison him. He's already super disloyal. To the dungeon, my friend. To the dungeon. Where you never be let out. And you rot until you die. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely a nice man. Don't doubt me. We'll put a tax office here. And that's that. Disagreement on the highest level. Uh, Timokuri is a man of sound reputation in Koroibos Koroibid, a nobleman of great uh, Nobleman of great virtue? Come on, I seem to distinctly remember this guy being convicted of doing the craziest things with slaves and a group of followers, um, sacrificing to Hades, all this kind of stuff. Why, why is he of great virtue? They've recently started to spar furiously whilst attending the Senate. Um... Ah, I'm gonna side with the good guy. Screw the other one. So the leader of the popular faction is uh, pretty crazy, all things considered. <laughs> Why should we... Ah, a prisoner desperate for redemption who calls himself Timaios. Yeah, it's a nice try, but no, you're not getting out of prison that way. We're gonna send the other guy, no matter how bad he is. Because you're even worse. Just accept it, you're gonna rot to death in prison. This is how it's gonna go. Nothing you can do about it. Ah, I think he died. <laughs> Foreigner arrives. It's the military party leader. How did you... So you arrive here, you're just immediately the military party leader? Okay, must be nice. I want to live your life. Just arrive in a foreign country, immediately be the boss. Uh, yeah, we're gonna need we're gonna need more import routes here for sure Okay, so we can take military traditions. The weird thing is why does it say base cost? I want to be able to reduce this Maybe we can maybe we can save so we have yeah, martial advances Maybe it doesn't go up. Maybe it can't go below the base cost it used to be that it could go to 80 I think Hmm Okay, well, we have to unlock three more. So 300 more points. Average code experience of 34. And with a gift horse. Uh, we have long been warned to be sus suspicious of gifts, especially in the current political climate. However, an interesting proposition has been made by Democracy's Demosthenes, leader of the civil faction. Should be aware of what they might expect in return. So Lemnos can get state-owned farmlands and more tax. Sure. I'll take that. Nothing bad will come of it. This is the real invention that you want. Sieging. That, that helps a lot. 
Army weight modifier. Ruler popularity increase. I love it. Sacrifice of the guards costs. Yeah, all of these are good. Spending the money for things. I love it. Okay, there's everything built here. The only thing that's left, really, is to turn this into a city. I mean, there's something to be said for just keeping the fish here. I didn't know that, actually, the trade good could change, but apparently it can, really. So... Gotta be a little bit careful in that regard. And we're done. What can we import? Ooh, ooh, someone is offering grain. There's also someone offering earthenware. I have to take this. Okay, I'll take it. Thanks, more research points. Don't mind if I do. Ah, yeah, we're still getting good influence. We're almost getting two influence. That's pretty sweet. That is really, really sweet, actually. I like it. So, making this into a city. I mean, we kind of have to, don't we? If oratory advances. Let's just change governor policy costs. I like it. Triumph costs. Just random monthly loyalty. Good. Good. We're still making money, but we're not making outrageous amounts. I want to make outrageous amounts here. Hmm. Uh, we have a wise man who has been, become renowned among our citizens in the city of Athena, province of Hellas. Now they started to look to him for guidance in their daily lives, following his teaching and ideals. He claims pleasure is and should be the ultimate goal for everyone, debunking the relevancy of virtuous behavior. We have seen a growing cult of hedonism in the wake of the philosopher seeking the physical pleasures of life. Not sure that's good for our population if we think about it. Hmm, can lose one martial point for two finesse points. It's not as important since um, we're gonna get elected out of office at some point, so... We can leave him there as a uh, permanent local philosopher, but I'm not sure I want to deal with the unrest. Mm. The manpower is nice, but yeah, I don't think so. Okay, teach me personally then. Whatever. Teach me how um, seeking pleasure is the ultimate virtue. I'm sure that's a really hard teaching to get people to accept. So, you're saying I should always indulge myself? No, no, no. I can't accept that. No, it's true. you got to indulge yourself at every possible opportunity. But your teachings are so hard to follow. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, we could switch to research points now, actually. If you wanted to. Hmm. Sure, we're still, we're still making money and we're not really spending it. So, and we lost this guy. Just, ooh. Hello, 98 loyalty, 10 charisma, sweet. You can plus one senate influence. Unconventional politics. Our stance on corruption has ruffled quite a few feathers among some senators who still have a rather grave view of morality. Democorus Demosthenid has requested that we back a change in constitution. Ironically, his request comes back with the promise of quite a sizable sweetener. What the heck, man? I believed in you. You were great. You're really popular. He's the governor of Thrace, our our former leader. <sighs> He's gonna give me some money, so we go assembly of citizens. What do we currently have? So we currently have assembly of residents, which is corruption reduction. It's gonna reduce tyranny. Kind of want to abolish the assemblies, actually. It's gonna make the populace pretty strong, though. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Only by removing the right for assemblies to pass judgment on the decisions of our government will we be able to get on with ruling without interference. So there's a theme to this. Every time you do something that is like really beneficial for your state, you have to pay uh, for it with like a lot of populist faction influence. So if you're not careful and you just push through everything that's really great for you, um, you will end up with a very strong populist faction that you can't really stop. Like here, yeah, lifetime elections, on the one hand, it's nice. On the other, yeah, I don't know. You don't really want the populist faction um, in place. It's not a, it's not a great thing, because they reduce your influence. Hmm. No. No. We won't. Oh, weird war. 
No! They're gonna they're gonna trample over my fields. They're gonna run through my prospering areas. That's not right. Go away. I don't like it. How's the political situation? Oh, we've attacked Pergamon. Okay. Or rather, Frigia's attacked Pergamon. It would have been nice if I maybe got a message or something, but okay. Don't bother. Don't bother. I'm just a tool, apparently. So we're fighting Macedon, Thrace, and Pergamon? Hmm. Yeah, difficult to say who I want to win. Like, if Frigia wins, they're gonna become stronger again. If Macedon and Thrace win, I'm gonna have a threat to deal with, with Macedon and Thrace, so I'm not sure what to do here. Oh, look at this. They hate me. I mean, mainly because we're at war, but still. Come on. And they're really sieging us down. I could just... I could probably just hire these mercenaries, but it would reduce my... It would reduce my military experience that I gain if I rely too heavily on mercenaries. What is the problem with these guys? Like... We can't get higher than 50% experience, so you can only get half experience on these cohorts as max. Alright. Question is, if I add another unit to this, it's gonna start out as not experience at all, but the question is if we can maybe, or is it just the leader that determines how experienced these guys can become? That is something that I wanna know. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna put him in charge. And we caught someone red-handed. Hold in front of the Senate. Uh, this guy's a sorry side cop with a mace in hand. Guys, you really gotta learn how to solve your differences in other ways than just macing people to death. This is not how we do things. Um, yeah, into the prison. Into the prison, what can you do? And we lost our guy here. Okay. Capable, loyal. What more can you want? Sweet. Alrighty, um, these guys, we can expect them to come to us very soon. To be honest, I don't like it, but I don't think there's much I can do against this. I could hire those mercenaries. Uh, we're making three, how much would it cost? Um, 419, we could actually have these guys for quite a while, but it's also gonna cost us military experience, so... I'd rather not. I mean, if they have to burn down my fields and take my people as slaves, we can get other people. <laughs> Just probably not what a democratic ruler should say. Yeah, we can get a different people. But uh, <laughs> for now, I'm going to end it here. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, you can leave a like. Always helps out the series, helps out the channel. If you want to see more of this stuff, consider subscribing. And uh, I hope we see you in the next episode. Thanks and bye-bye. <laughs>